hi guys welcome back to another video and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new here hi my name is onyeka and if you're returning thank you very much for returning um happy new year once again i hope this year brings you all your heart desires and all of that good stuff so um today's video i am here to talk about mostly we have been and the struggles people face after college just basically life after life after college and the struggles people don't get to talk about because i understand it's one thing to get admission and start schooling is another thing to be done with schooling and then you're facing life after schooling and that's a different it's more like a different bargain altogether so i'm here to talk about that and i'm very excited to talk about it because why not <laughs> i've had my own first year of um life after college so and i am still having um my own first year of life after college so i just thought to come talk to you guys about it and to prep those of you that are still schooling or still planning on coming into Canada, just what to expect, um, just in case everything don't go as planned because I know we plan and sometimes things don't go as we plan. So anyways, I'm here to talk about that in this video. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. If you're not following me on social media, please follow me on Instagram. Without further ado, let's just head right into the video. <laughs> okay so where do i start from now um i think i'm going to start from the very beginning let me just take you guys down uh, memory lane um from when i came into canada and all that good stuff so for those of you that are new and for my ogs i know this will not be um a new thing to you guys i'm so grateful to you guys you guys are the best actually like thank you for actually sticking to this channel with all my inconsistency anyways so I came into Canada in 2021, December 11th, right? And um, I came in for a one-year program and on, in international business management. Um, before coming into Canada for the one-year program, I knew that I was going to go for a second program because of um, I already read up on how if you get your one-year um, if you go for one year you're going to have like a one year postgraduate work permit and if you go for two years you're going to have like three years work um postgraduate work permit and that i already knew and i made up my mind that i was going to go for a two-year course just so i just get the three years and just settle in well and so i don't have to go like helter skelter and all of that so i came in here for the one year program and after my program started in january i finished in august and i went in for the second program immediately um okay so i'm going to talk about how i went in for the second program because i got a couple of questions asking me how i applied for my second course so because i still stayed back in my school um i this school i started my first program was the same school i went in for my second program so um getting the admission wasn't that big of a deal all i had to do was just to call the admission office like the registrar's office the international office and i made it known to them that i was going to go for a second program and it was just over the phone because i there wasn't any it wasn't like that big of a deal and i made them know that i was going to go in for a second program and immediately i just hung up and i was given the admission letter it was that easy so there wasn't a need to actually make like an actual video telling you guys how i went in for a second program and that was because that was it, at the school i started with already i didn't have to pay admission fee i didn't have to pay any fee for that what i just needed to pay was um uh 2000 2300 dollars that um they said i was going to pay for in order to secure the seat so that was how i got um admission for my second program but i'm sure if you want to like transfer to another school it would be quite different from mine so yeah so i got the second program and i started in september i just had like two weeks break from my first program to rest and i started my second program immediately that was very hectic i would say if you could take if you can take breaks please by all means take break because i was almost not myself it was just too hectic for me but i'm glad i did i'm done with school now so that all that matters so I went for the second program in September 
and I finished in um, April of 2023 so um, when I was done in April I had my graduation I had my graduation in June and that was when it was more like a reality check for me what's next right you're no longer a student now it's now like you feel like coming here as a student is 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 like a big deal like you've just killed one big hurdle yes it's, a, it's, it's actually an a hurdle you scaled through but then life after schooling is different <laughs> i'm emphasizing on different because i didn't i didn't expect it to be this hectic i'm not gonna lie um, so when I was done with school, it was now like the reality check for me, right? Um, um, I applied for my postgraduate work permit after I was given my transcript and the other letter saying you could go ahead to like you're dismissed from school or something like that. So I used that and I applied for my postgraduate work permit and I was given three years postgraduate work permit because I did it. Like I did two, I took two programs, right? So that's like two plus two equals to three. And then that was when the real life now started for me. Um, first of all, I'm going to talk about how it can get more lonely. It's already, okay, it's already lonely when you're in Canada as a whole, but then being on a postgraduate work permit seems more different and difficult because then um you know the status about you working 20 hours a week has already been lifted and everybody now wants to work it's just like everyone is working you know then when you're in school you could like go to classes and you see your friends you guys will link up you guys will talk but after school is like the loneliness is raised to power too it's like you're actually on your own your friends that you guys really usually see in class and talk and all that good stuff you hardly see them again because everyone is looking everyone like is actually looking at the next step in life those that got jobs who have to work full-time and full-time work requires like lots of um you have to be going to work every day and all of that it's just like it gets more lonely after um schooling so um i was battling with that as well the fact that i wasn't able to see my friends as much as i would and uh, even my friends that were in the same building with me we could hardly see because everyone is working everyone is trying to like gather as much money as possible and then it's now boiled down to the fact that oh you had to have like an actual job a knock job to be able to apply for your peer now coming down to the job parts now became something else for me it was a hassle honestly i didn't imagine myself you know after your schooling you everybody plans or wishes to just transition into work permit and into like a job immediately like the knock job immediately and just use that and start um, your journey to peer but um, I won't lie to you it's not as fantastic as it sounds or it's not as easy as it sounds or it's it's not it's 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 not a bed of roses as they make it to seem um, for some people they they might get the job immediately and I'm happy for them and that's so fantastic that's so good but for other people um you might not get that job as um as soon as you think you will um and the case my own case was that i didn't get that job as as soon as i thought i was gonna get a job uh, there was this pressure that just came from nowhere mind you i, I am I'm, I'm like three years work permit right so i'm actually meant to be relaxed because I've already paid for my, will I say, I've paid for my peace of mind, kind of, that kind of thing, because you have three years, right? But it wasn't that for me. After schooling, it was like one pressure to another pressure. I was constantly panicking, like, will I get this job? I'll um, attend interviews and um, 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 recruiters, HR people will be telling you, oh, we're going to get back to you, but you won't hear anything from them. 
oh my god i didn't know that it was going to get this intense and um i had other people that would tell me oh you have to do like i literally did everything that that one could do in order to secure a job but the job wasn't just coming then I, I just sat down sometimes sometimes i usually sit down and think like those that actually did one year how are they feeling because i'm on three years work permit and i'm feeling this like i'm having this um anxiety i'm feeling this sad i'm feeling low so what about those that did one year so i'm going to give it to anybody that actually went through one year um got one year work permit and you you got your peer like you guys are the ogs i can't imagine what you went through like that thing can be very devastating um yeah so i finished and i kept on applying to jobs and what people don't tell you is that jobs are not that easy to get especially the professional job you could get like all this um maybe all these other kind of jobs uh, Walmart and all those kind of jobs when you come you might find them easy to get but then when you're transitioning to like the actual um, full-time job and all those jobs that would actually put you in the knock and give you a postgraduate work permit it's not that easy to get at, at least for my case it wasn't that fantastic like it wasn't that easy to get um, I also noticed that it was telling on me indirectly but i didn't know because some videos i was pushing out on youtube where it wasn't doing well um and i'm not actually one to be functioning properly when there's something going on like i wasn't having it and it was actually showing on my youtube channel as well and then i just had to tell myself it's true like you know what you just need to take a break go and sort yourself out sort your life out and know what's up with you because you're not fine like you're not okay and I am meant to be okay because I have three three years work with me, but I wasn't okay. So that was why I had to take this break from YouTube to go figure out my life out and know like what's the next thing, what strategy am I going to put in place, what am I going to do. So um, I applied to a couple of jobs. Like I could say, okay, give or take two hundred jobs. What was I doing wrong? I really don't know because I had to let my friends even interview me because i wanted to know what the problem was like why am i not being hired by employees um so there was one day i spoke to someone um she was telling me that honestly it's not from me sometimes though you are not the problem it's just the recruiters and sometimes some of them just put up and put up all these job ads just for um to to fulfill all righteousness meanwhile they already have like the people they already they already need or sometimes they might be looking for something else that you might not really know because there, 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 was, there were a couple of interviews i did and in my mind i was like oh i aced it but then i wasn't just called i don't know the reason why so um yeah so after all those period i found out that I think I was getting too comfortable in my um, in my in my comfort zone I now decided to start applying to jobs that was outside my city so I started applying to jobs outside London and even outside the province you get so um, and I think I did I, I, I think that was a great thing I found that in time and I'm going to tell anybody to that is actually planning on out that is and that is almost finishing school or coming in i think everybody needs this advice in canada as long as you're not comfortable you're not comfortable so and what i'm trying to say is that as long as you are not where you want to be don't get too comfortable in that area in that com in that city or anything be open to different things there are opportunities everywhere so in my head i felt like um it was only london because i was done with school um, I had to stay back in London, but no, that wasn't the case. Um, after I um, applied to other jobs and I wasn't getting them in London, right? Then I started applying to jobs outside my city. Um, I thought about Toronto, but honestly, Toronto is so expensive. Like the kind of job that will actually take me to Toronto should be worth it. Although I did a couple of applications there, I was open to moving there as well, but. Um, I didn't still get some I didn't still get the jobs in Toronto so what I did now I started applying to jobs that were outside 
London that were outside Ontario. At that point, I was open to even moving anywhere, even Manitoba. I was open to moving to Nova Scotia, anywhere at, at all, as long as I get that job that was going to push me to like that was going to like that was going i was going to use to start right because the most important thing was to start from somewhere and that's what i keep on telling anybody if you're thinking like if you're trying to get too comfortable with where you are um and in my case it was easier because i'm not married i don't have a child so there's nothing really holding me back right i don't have anybody um um, answering to I'm answering to only myself like I'm not giving accounts to anybody so what's the need of actually staying back what why am I even feeling the need to get comfortable when I haven't gotten what I actually came to Canada for like everybody knew knows what they come here for and most people you know we, we came here to get something I know there are so many opportunities but like then PR is part of the priorities on our list and why should I get too comfortable when I haven't um, gotten the PR yet so that was when I made up my mind to start applying to different provinces um, and I started applying I applied to um, British Columbia as well and yeah I got and it was just like a joke because <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be that um, fast it was just like a joke so i just one day i threw in an application and um i got a message from the employer that i if i can come in for an interview the next day that day evening and that was in Brit british columbia and in my head i'm like what the hell have i done like um i was still in london uh, but my cv was already carrying british columbia so that's something else you can do if you're planning because most times when employers see that your cv is carrying a different province they might not want to reach out to you you get so you might actually have to lie and maybe put a different location so the empire was like if i could come in that evening for an interview and i'm like um okay that was quite sudden um if she could give me like um the next week because i'm kind of out of the city so it was at that moment i made up my mind that i was going to go to british columbia for the interview was i going to come back to london i don't know but i just knew that i needed to move from where i was so that was what i did um the next day i went for the int um the next day i had to book my flight and it was just like i made up my mind at that minute at that second and that's what that's the actual thing to do because if i stood like if i stayed like few days or few more um hours to make up my mind i might end up changing my mind and still stay back in london be open to us uh, so i'm going to keep on telling you please be open to different provinces be open to different opportunities um because once you get too comfortable you might find out that um it's it's it can be better elsewhere right and I, in london i'm going to make a video about london too um and about ontario as well because um it's not that easy in london jobs are not that easy to get in london as well and ontario is becoming so expensive in fact canada is becoming so expensive but what i'm just trying to say is that be open to different things don't just settle don't just feel too comfortable as long as you have not gotten that job you want because it depends and people have their goal right i don't know what your goal is but some people their aim or goal is to get like to be any like six figures and I understand that you have to start from somewhere but if you see that province that is giving you the opportunity to start from somewhere why not move like you are not tied to one particular province remember this place is not even our land so why do you feel you want to come in to like a particular city and get too comfortable especially if you don't have anything holding you back so um i went for the interview in british columbia and <laughs> <laughs> and after the interview um i was hoping to um get like the job offer already because uh you guys you guys cannot fall my hand i i was in my head i'm just like you guys cannot fall my hand i just came from like another province to get interviewed so they stole the beat and it's in about um some hrs in this place like hrs need to do better after you interview someone if you're not moving forward with the person just let them know like we're not going to move forward with you but sometimes they're going to stall and you will hear back from that recruiter even after two weeks or a month and that thing can get very devastating so those those are some of the 
um, cons I find with Canada. I don't know. I think they do it in Nigeria too, but I'm not so sure. But I feel the HR um, people or departments in this country need to do better. They don't get, they not getting back to you just makes you more anxious and wondering if um what's next with you and that was my case they didn't really get back to me um they got back to me after a couple after i wrote to them because i was like okay i think i need to write to them so i wrote to them and that was when they told me oh we're not going to move forward with you blah 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 and in my head i'm like what are you guys are you guys really serious so those periods were not so fantastic for me so it was just like i was just like all over the place i wasn't understanding what was going on but eventually i got something doing i'm currently doing something um here right now i didn't end up moving back to london because you know honestly i didn't see the need to and yeah i got something doing here and that's what i'm doing right now um <sighs> Yeah, so I just came in here to let you guys know what my um, my life update is all about. I have more videos to talk about. Like I have like other videos to tell you guys. Life after college is very fantastic. <laughs> it's very fantastic actually. Um, it's something you're going to see. You, 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 you're not going to be talking about your classes and your grades anymore. The discussions you're going to be having now is like, okay, what's the next thing? What's the, you're just going to be having PR, PR discussion. Like, oh my God, it's not so easy, but you know, I've been here and I've been, I've been doing this, I've been pushing and I just know that it's going to it will call, it will end well so if you see people that like if you see people that are done with college just pray for them and wish them well um yeah so i think i'm going to end this video here i have other videos to make so definitely please if you have questions um leave it on the comment section and i'll be more than willing to answer your question i'm so excited to be back and i pray that i'm going to be consistent yeah so until then i will see you guys in my next video Stay fabulous. Bye guys.